My truck. Here's fifty dollars. Put it next to limo. Eddie Murphy, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Hey everyone, I'm John from Let's Talk, and today we have another 4K Blu-ray review for you. This time it's the 1987 Tony Scott directed Eddie Murphy starring Beverly Hills Cop 2. But before we dive into the review, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews, tech reviews, and video game reviews, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. So, Beverly Hills Cop 2 is the sequel to the first Beverly Hills Cop, which was directed by Martin Brest that came out in 1984. This film sees the return of Axel Foley, Detective Axel Foley from Detroit, Michigan, as he's called back to Beverly Hills to help his friends, Judge Reinhold and John Aston, investigate the shooting of their police captain, Ronnie Cox. So he has to head out there, help them out, and it's just your basic 80s action movie plot. This, one, this time this film is directed by Tony Scott, who directed Top Gun in 1986 with Jerry Bruckheimer and Don Simpson producing that. They decided to bring him on board to help direct this film, and this film has that Tony Scott feeling to it. It does feel like Top Gun, it does feel like Days of Thunder, it does kind of feel like true romance in a way, the way it's shot. It's got that kinetic, fast-paced energy, which the first one did have a very fast-paced kinetic energy too, but the scenes felt like they were going a little bit longer and the film itself just felt a little bit more organized the first one whereas the second one everything you just going scene to scene it is very fast it's kind of got that you know 80s cocaine feel to it where they're just writing movies and like all right cut let's get to the next scene all right guys let's get to the next scene and it's just you know it's got that quick editing it's got that 80s soundtrack there's a couple montages in here this feels like an 80s movie and if that sounds like a negative Oh, it's not, because I'm a big fan of Tony Scott, and I am a big fan of 80s movies. Uh, I just eat that stuff up. I know it's probably not the best made film, and it, and it really isn't, but from a nostalgic point of view and from my just personal enjoyment in film, I'm just a big 80s kind of fan, big fan of 80s movies and how that 80s tone feels. I do really love, I do love 80s montages. I love it when the soundtrack kicks in and it's just over, it's just blowing everything up and we're just going and seeing the city and everything like that. I'm just, that's what I'm totally into and that's just my thing. And that's one of the big reasons I got into film. And if I'm being completely honest with you, my favorite Eddie Murphy film is Beverly Hills Cop, the first one. So I was really excited for Beverly Hills Cop 2. Obviously this came out after I was born, but I was still a huge fan of it when I first saw it. I actually haven't seen it in years until I popped in this 35th anniversary edition yesterday. And then I remembered, yep, I really do like this movie. But it is a very flawed movie, I'm not going to lie. The plot itself is a very basic plot, your basic sequelitis plot where we have to just somehow find a way to get Axel Foley back to Beverly Hills. You know, like they kind of made it like like since the first one, somehow Ronnie Cox, Judge Reinhold, and John Aston's character have become super close with uh, Axel Foley even though he's in Detroit. They kind of, they closed it out so good in the first one, we didn't need a sequel, but you know, the first one made so much money, there has to be a sequel and Paramount just could not resist and they found a way to do it. And you know, I understand because I'm glad this movie exists, but you know, you gotta look past some of these basic plot holes and basic storytelling errors just to make this movie exist. And I understand that. I'm not gonna take that away from the film, but just be aware, like, you know, this script kind of does feel a little half-assed. Half There's some lines in there that are just ridiculous. I mean, I was one scene there where Judge Reinhold says to John Astor's character, I know you have domestic issues at home. Nobody in their right mind ever says domestic issues. They go, I know you're having some problems at home. Now, I guess they're trying to say that fits in the Judge Reinhold's character, but Judge Reinhold is actually very goofy in this movie, much more goofier than he is in the first movie. So I felt like his character kind of changed a lot from the first one to the second one. And, you know, that's just because, you know, it's a sequel now, and instead of them trying to become like that fish out of water thing, Eddie Murphy has been there before. So now it's not really, now it's just building on their friendship and everything that we started to build the base on in the first one. Now they're a flourishing friendship group, these three guys. It's like these three guys against the world kind of deal. And I really did enjoy that. And the main villain in this movie is Bridget Nielsen, the former Mrs. Sylvester Stallone is in this movie. And I actually really do enjoy her in this movie. I didn't see her in too many things in the 80s. Um, I thought she was actually very good, a very good villain. It's nice to see a female-led villain even in the 80s. And I thought she did a really good job. Uh, you know, she didn't really have the comedy beats, but she did her job very well, and I thought it was a nice change of pace for the first one, so I have nothing really bad to say about her. One of the things that I love most about this movie is that it's directed by Tony Scott. 
Tony Scott has directed some of my favorite movies of all time. He directed Top Gun, Days of Thunder, True Romance, Enemy of the State, The Last Boy Scout. This guy for me, just kill it. Oh, Man on Fire. I'm a big Tony Scott fan. I know most people always remember his brother Ridley Scott, but Tony Scott is my guy. He is one of my favorite directors. It was, I was devastated when he actually ended up committing suicide, I believe in like 2011 or 2012 because I always really enjoyed him. I always enjoyed him more to Ridley Scott, if I'm being completely honest with you. He makes a certain type of film that me, personally, as a human being, that I really enjoy. So, you know, this movie is just kind of tailor-made for me. It's just fun. It, uh, you're gonna have the, it's almost two hours long, and that time just flows by, and the way he shoots his movies, I always loved. This is very different from the first one, where the first one always felt like it was kind of like between noon and three o'clock in Beverly Hills. This one feels like the whole movie takes place somehow between like five and seven p.m. in that twilight, in that uh, within that magic hour of filming where the sky is like pink and orange, and the whole movie kind of just has that feel, and you know, that's something you've seen from like Top Gun or Days of Thunder where it's just that Tony Scott way of shooting. And I, I personally just love that. And this movie had that in there. I mean, most actually, most Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer films do have that way of shooting because Michael Bay actually directed Bad Boys and, Mike, and Bad Boys has that similar sense of feeling as well. It, uh, that tone and that change in cinematography definitely helps to separate it from the first one. But I still don't think it's as good as the first one by no means, but it's still a lot of fun. And if you haven't seen Beverly Hills Cop 2 in a long time, I would say definitely check it out. Um, you can skip Beverly Hills Cop 3. Uh, that one shouldn't exist at all. I'm not a fan of Beverly Hills Cop 3 at all. They should have ended it here at 2. But Beverly Hills Cop 2 is a good time, and I definitely can recommend it from a film standpoint. But we're here to talk about the 35th anniversary Blu-ray of this. So what we got here is a 4K release from Paramount Pictures. They actually released a couple years ago a 4K for the first Beverly Hills Cop, but they also released where they rescanned all three films, a three pack that's just on Blu-ray, not 4K, that came out in 2020 that has these all these scans on it, that has this scan and has this scan in it. So we probably will get Beverly Hills Cop 3, I guess, at some point, maybe next year on 4K. You know, these are the same scans, so if you have that three pack and you don't feel the need to rush out and grab the 4K, I can honestly tell you it's the same scan. Matt has it, we've compared it. They're about the exact same picture quality, obviously 4K. You're gonna have HDR and the colors, are, you know, in 4K, the resolution's gonna be a lot better, but it's not a noticeable jump, especially to the naked eye. Even looking at it side by side, you're not gonna notice a huge difference. So, as far as this packaging for the 35th anniversary edition, I love it that the fact that the slip cover, and especially where it says 35th anniversary, is in that orange color that I was saying that Tony Scott likes to shoot his film in. It's got a nice little slip cover on there, then you come underneath, you get the same exact picture underneath. And this has a DTX HD Master Audio on this, which actually I thought was very good. I enjoyed it pretty good. I thought that it really definitely made my you know, my speakers pop, but I, I didn't think it was anything special, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, the audio was pretty good, but I didn't see a big difference, and this is actually the same audio track, like I said, that's on that trilogy that came out in 2020, so it's nothing new. The first Beverly Hills Cop 4K also had a DTS HD master audio track, so it's the same exact thing. There's no real, you're not getting an Atmos track, which is no problem, but there is Dolby Vision on here, so definitely one Dolby thing we got on there, Dolby Vision definitely helps make the colors pop, and for an 80s movie, that is very important, especially for a Tony Scott directed film because I do think that he makes some of the most visually stunning films and the 4K video format really helps to make his films pop. I actually thought Days of Thunder was one of the most underrated 4Ks that flew under the radar and I think that this looks very similar to it as far as 4K quality. I don't have a bad thing, I would give this a, a 10 out of 10 as far as visuals go. This is perfect, it looked great. That is the one big thing I can totally recommend if you're gonna be running out and grabbing this. The visuals are just stunning on it. It's a very good, good looking 4K. I loved how good it looked. The audio was pretty good. Uh, the extras are, they're all right. It's nothing special, you know, this is a Paramount release. This isn't like Criterion or Arrow Video or Shout Factory. This is just your run of the mill Paramount release. It's not anything crazy, so it's just nice that we get it. And I like to have them separately. I don't like to grab the trilogies. I always like to have my films packaged on their own so I can go over and be like, all right, I want to watch Beverly Hills Cop 2 tonight instead of Beverly Hills Cop 1. I have the 4K, I get to look at the box art. That's what I enjoy personally. But like I said, if you have that trilogy from a few years ago, no need to rush out and grab this unless you are just a huge fan of this film and you feel like you want to see it in 4K. But I'm telling you, I did the research, it's nothing crazy. 
you're not missing out on too much unless you really just want to see that slight visual uptick. But guys, if I'm going to rate this entire package, including film, audio, video, and extras, I'd probably give this a 7.5 out of 10. I'd say you can run out and grab this. And guys, as always, thank you for being a fan of Let's Talk. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and you tell all your friends.